Yeah, good day, uh, ZL2, Charlie, Tango Mike, testing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ZL2, Charlie, Tango Mike, transmitting into a dummy load. This is a test, give you a little bit of feedback there, funny old thing, because the microphone is very close to the transmitter. Let me just turn that volume down and I'll explain what this is about. So, interesting enough, just uh, played around tonight with hooking up to the, the Teensy, a very simple microphone that goes into, uh, you can't quite see it there, but in the audio sh uh, shield that goes underneath the Teensy is a microphone input. So I just soldered that directly to the pads. And then coming out this side, um, if you look at online at the audio shield, you'll be able to see it very clearly, but next to the line-in header, there is a line out. So I've just hooked up a 3.5mm um, stereo plug. So that's now taking... Um, audio out of the shield back through and essentially going backwards through what was the receiver so simplistically and I'll go through the, um, the, the software in a sec microphone comes in um, and what we're doing is the microphone is coming into the shield so the shield or the whole tensity starts here it's going through a low pass filter at 2800 kilohertz it's then going into a mixer with the same local oscillator that was used for the receiver that's upshifted to uh, 10 kilohertz double sideband back through a bandpass filter in this particular case it's the one that was tuned to um, lower sideband uh, and the output of that is then being split and going to minus uh, 45 degrees that's a Hilbert transform and the other side is going to the plus 45 Hilbert transform exactly the same Hilbert transforms that were used uh, on the receive. In this particular case we're now getting the I and the Q going out and so that's what's coming out of here. So out of the line out coming through here into the um, transmitter. Well it's now a transmitter, funny old thing. And uh, just grab a pencil. So now it's going into the SBL1s again being mixed by the, um, the VFO frequency and up shifted to, in this particular case, the 80 meter band. So frequency there was 3. Point, uh, or 3650, which, oh, this has just drifted a bit, which was, what's that was there, so um, quite interesting. Obviously no power amp on this, so um, just very low power coming out of here, but uh, as you can hear, there's definitely a single sideband coming through there, so there's no reason why you wouldn't just now just feed that off and take it through a power amp. Um, um, low pass filtering it and off you go so quite interesting and ridiculously um, if I can use that word simple to wire up so in terms of the software so uh, the uh, let me just zoom up on that hopefully it'll be reasonably clear so in terms of within software wiring it up and it's just it's essentially it's akin to wiring up modules in a standard single side band radio you can see here the audio input, which we have defined as being um, the microphone. So audio input is the mic. So that is coming in. Audio microphone is coming in and going to the low pass filter, the 2800 kilohertz one. The output of that is going to the mixer on input zero. Our IF oscillator, that's the 10 kilohertz one, is going into the mixer on the second input. The output of the mixer, as per the diagram, is now going to the bandpass filter, the lower side one, uh, say again, the lower sideband one. The output of the lower sideband one is two of them exactly the same because I've just taken the same output in parallel. One side's going to the Hilbert minus 45, and the other side's going to the Hilbert plus 45. And the output of those, uh, in turn, are going out the audio output, which has been defined um, as the line out. One's going out the left hand, and one's going out the right hand, um, which is essentially just um, I and Q. So down in the, uh, we are setting up the shield, um, no different here. So the only difference is, is for the input select, it's been now audio input mic. For the receiver, you may recall, it was the um, line input. Um, and I've just doctored this code to be just the transmit code. Um, I'm now unmuting the line out, because I want to use the line out and I'm making the line out level 20. Um, if you go on to the 
online design tool for the Teensy, um, which unfortunately closed down, but I'll bring it up. I'll do another vid showing probably more details of using that online tool. Uh, an output level of 20 is outputting roughly 1.4 volts um, peak to peak um, on that line out, which was enough to uh, drive that SBL1 to get a, uh, a nice mixed output. Um, I've commented these because um, I'm not using uh, as a receiver, so I'm just not bothering with those. Otherwise, everything's exactly the same. There goes that IF oscillator with the oscillator frequency, which was 10k. Um, there goes the Hilbert transforms being set up using the coefficients, which are defined at the top, the bandpass filter and lowpass filter. And that is essentially it. Um, quite remarkable that with so few lines of code that you can essentially configure using this little teensy in the audio library and that audio shield a, um, a single sideband transceiver. So there's nothing really stopping you now. You know, once you've got the basics like that sorted out, then it's a relatively straightforward process within the loop, controlling when you're starting to read input pins, just to um, on the fly switch which way you want signals to go, um, etc. And um, the best way to do that is just using the the mixer on the audio panel. Noting that the mixer is not the same as a multiplier. A mixer is a pure summer. And the beauty of that summing um, tool, I guess, is you can set individual gains between essentially 0 and 1. So if you switch an input to 0, you've effectively turned it off. If you switch another input to 1, you've essentially turned it on. So it wouldn't be that hard to um, essentially, um, it on the fly, so in runtime, um, switch the radio to lower sideband to upper sideband, um, switching um, down here, which is you know a low pass filter, but say um, 700 hertz for a CW or 300 hertz for a, a narrow band CW. Um, you could switch in there another band pass filter, which is tuned for the upper sideband. So you really on the fly, you could quite easily um, make this uh, a multi mode radio. Anyway, so um, just wanted to quickly show that. Uh, again, nothing's refined. It was just more seeing if I could do it. Um, well, to see how easy it was to do, more the point. And uh, it was remarkably straightforward. Quite interesting. So, uh, like I say, using the microphone input on the bottom of that shield. Um, I didn't try using the line in. There's no other reason why I couldn't. Um, just as the, the microphone has an inbuilt amplifier, so it was very easy just to to amplify that input signal um, within the software and again using the line out to to drive that so uh, there you go reasonably straightforward and I think later on to turn this into a transceiver um, in the past with some of my double side band radios I've just paralleled up inputs and outputs literally in parallel but um, there's nothing stopping you from say having a, a um, double pole double throw relay here and same on this side and then just switch um, outputs to inputs and vice versa. Yeah, that would be pretty straightforward. You wouldn't have to do anything about the um, the, uh, the VFO. That just that just remains as it is. But there you go. Um, interesting enough. And I will uh, end there. ZL2 Charlie Tanger Mike. Thanks, fellas. And uh, happy experimenting with the Teensy. See ya.